Welcome back. Well, yes, indeed, we talked about several strike actions uh, going on across the country. But well, you also do know, in case you've forgotten, that the Nigerian Polytechnics, uh, the academic staff union of Polytechnics, have been on strike now for several months. And, uh, well, the matter has not been addressed. Well, it's not just the academic staff union of Polytechnics that are on strike because it looks as though the Polytechnics have just come to a halt. You also have the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Polytechnics also on strike, and then it just goes on. Well, yes, we'll be looking at some of these issues. We're joined now by uh, Gani Akinle, who is the former president and member the National Executive Committee of the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Polytechnics and also the Deputy Registrar of Yaba College of Technology. Morning, well, I thank you for coming on today. Thank you very much, Marlene. Well, it's interesting, Marlene. having seen uh, now SANIP uh, as though ASUP strike was not enough, and then SANIP. What's the background? What's going on? Thank you very much. Uh, it's necessary to educate Nigerians. They already know that there is no good leadership in the country, and especially in the education sector. As I'm sitting down here, I have a copy of an agreement signed in February 2010, otherwise known as 20, 2009 agreement, which the government has not implemented. He just made a comment, and the news carried yesterday, that ASU has said on the same issue from 2009 to 2013. What is the problem? The insincerity of our leaders. We went to negotiation with unions. We will do this. We agree. And there are signatories, representatives of government, that we are going to do this. And committees were set up to ensure that this is implemented. We have implemented some monitoring committee from the university, polytechnics, colleges of education. What happened to the reports of these committees? Sincerely speaking, Nigerians should hold the government responsible for what has happened in the last few months, two and a half months, to be precise, in the polytechnic sector, the academic, the non-academic, the non-teaching staff. So it is the baseline that the government has been dishonorable enough to the extent that the workers, the staff in the education sector, polytechnic, has deemed it necessary. That is the only language you understand. But we have spoken the language of compromise, the language of negotiation which the government has failed to realize. As of today, the government has been able to meet us once in two and a half months, and that was a fortnight ago on Wednesday. On what are the issues? We presented issues. Each time we forward communique, each time we forward our demands, and the government would turn a deaf ear. From the minister to the executive secretary, nothing happened. It is in the course of this uh, strike that the government deemed it necessary to constitute the governing councils, because we were on strike. And it is this governing council's chairman that met with our union members a fortnight ago. Now, what are your demands? It's unfortunate that neither the executive secretary nor the minister, and from the information at my disposal, the minister is saying that he's not aware that SANIP was on strike or ASU was on strike, that he doesn't even know who SANIP is. And that's unfortunate. If you set up a committee and invited members of these unions to be part of that committee, how come you now turn around to say you don't know them? It's unfortunate. And Nigerians will ask questions. Who are members of the Implementation Monitoring Committee? And who signed the agreements with the government? Then if you don't know them, then something is wrong somewhere. Now, a fortnight ago, well, what are your bench line? We gave them at least four issues out of our plethora of our demands arising from this agreement. Up till today, we are yet to see the release of circulars we want on counties 15 from the head of service. We're yet to see the implementation of the renegotiation, I mean, the constitution of the implementation committee, which the government should have done, because agreement is to be renegotiated after three years, maximum of four years. We have signed this agreement for over five years now. And this is what our demands are. You, the agreement you signed, was it implemented at all? Partly, partly. Not up to 50% of it. And this time around, there are policies that in the course of uh, 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 implementing this will hinge on the negative aspect of our, of our members. We know we affect our members negatively, right? From the onset, you look at the issue of the discrimination against the polytechnic graduates. And that is the worst thing in Nigeria. The worst thing anything can, And 
our graduates are discriminated against in the market. Then what are we doing? Mr. You cannot Mr. come. Mr. Yes, there are those who who would um, fault your unions, okay. either as ASUP or as uh, SANIP, SANIP, as the case may be, mm -hmm. that you do not care about your students. That you just you, you've never gone on strike because your students were discriminated against, as you say. You've never gone on strike because your curriculum is not up to par. But you always go on strike for your own demand, and they'll say that's selfish. We are very selfless. One of the major reasons why we are on strike is the discrimination. And we have educated our students too. And they, you see on, on the streets, the students are protesting, are supporting us, that what we are doing, we want to do it once and for all. There has been circulars uh, during the Obasanjo regime saying that <coughs> the polytechnic, I mean, HND graduates are equal to uh, university graduates. But that is on paper. Go to the labor market. Wait, are you going on strike because of discrimination in the labor market? It's one of the criteria how? for one of the reasons that we're going on strike. Break it down. I mean, how okay. does it work? Why would you go on strike because of discrimination in the labor market? Is that to say that when graduates of polytechnics yeah. go seek employment, yes. uh, the labor force should not discriminate? I, I, I'm, I'm, yes, trying, yes. I'm struggling with that. Uh, you are quite aware that there are some banks, there are some financial institutions in this country that says if you are an HND graduate, don't apply. Is that not enough? Is that not enough? In Nigeria today, even at the federal ministries, there is a level you can get to with your HND, and which is not so with the DSC or BA. Is, is, that is enough. Because look at even the admission, admission criteria. When you are admitted to a university, people see it as, yes, you are top of the world. They say, ah, you are going to polytechnic. It is because of the psych the psychology the government has inputted into the, into the, into the Nigerian uh, masses that polytechnic is under, is below the university. I'm, I'm still thinking because how do you expect um, government to address that particular part where you say, yeah. uh, they say, look, if you're from polytechnics, don't yes. apply? Because yes. some will argue in the same way that yeah. they tell even graduates from universities, yes. if you didn't make a second class up, uh, upper, don't apply. Some will think that that's discrimination, but don't employers of labor yeah. have the right to choose the kinds of workforce that they want? That is wrong, sir. That is wrong, sir. Um, if you look at the engineering aspect, the Akansan, the Anan, uh, Ican, Koren, there has been reports saying, confirming the expertness of a polytechnic graduate. No, I I'm not questioning uh, okay. they are, uh, how good they are. Yes. What I'm saying is, the same way that some people will tell you in the workforce, yes. if you don't have a second class or a first class, don't yes. apply. Yes. Uh, so you say, some say, if you from polytechnics, don't apply. Mm. So would it be then that in places where maybe they just want, because don't forget, in some other places, they want polytechnic uh, uh, graduates. Yeah. In yes, some places... Yes. They want university graduates. Yes. So how is it going to work? Are you sure government will properly put their foot down on that one and tell employers of labor, don't discriminate to the extent that take all of them, whether you want them or not? Is that the case? Yes. If you have an HNG graduate and a, 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 a university graduate, give them a test on the same level, and you'll see the performance. Now, what we are saying is that a government policy that discriminates between a graduate of a of a polytechnic and that university. It's not a good policy. Okay, so and the, the government, government policy are yeah. supposed to what obtains in the labor market. There the are two market. different things. Yeah. Government has come up with several policies. And I just mentioned the issue of Obasanjo regime that says there is a ceiling before that this is a, 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 the, the level, the highest level a polytechnic graduate can go. But under that policy, which was released with the circular, supported with the circular, removes that ceiling, which is discriminatory. Everybody knows it is discriminatory. That has been removed. But what, has, what we are saying is that that is on paper. It is not practically implemented in any labor force, even in the ministry. And it is hinging against, it is working against our, our, our members and the students we are, we, are, we are protecting. They know too. They know the level they can go. You say, you are a, 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 a polytechnic graduate? No, we don't want you. 
And just, I, 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 short of mentioning financial institutions, I said, no, we don't want polytechnic graduates, HND, even if you have first, uh, first, first class or second class upper, against your university graduates that even third class. So what we are saying that that is, that is wrong. And I'm telling you that the students and their parents do this in the labor market. Perhaps because we, he who wears the shoes knows, knows where it pinches. But have you heard some people who also think that, uh, that what we seem to be focusing on not laying proper emphasis on the reason why polytechnics were set up in the first instance. That if we had properly focused on the technical aspects that nobody would even reject them for any reason because they've got the skill, they're very capable, and so the question of rejecting them wouldn't even up, uh, come up in the first place. If I understand you very well, the main reason for establishing polytechnics is for technological development. How developed is Nigerian technology? Because we have removed the practical aspect of it to the theoretical aspect. The, the, the practical from the polytechnics to the theoretical from the, from the universities. If you, if, you, if, if you want to go into practical fields, I'm not talking of philosophy, I'm not talking of sociology, I'm talking of engineering, I'm talking of accounts, accounting standards, go to the polytechnics. But because we have not done that, we are now chasing the shadow. Wait, you don't have practicals in the polytechnics anymore? What do we have? No, you don't have.